now, one of the common procedures in uh, gynecology is uh, what is known as broadly, I start with calling it D and C. D and C, <laughs> D and C is D and C. D and C. Some people write it D and C, but I don't really think that is correct. <clears throat> because if strictly speaking, one were to write it properly, then it would be D N small n and C, which generally, so it is D and C. D stands for dilatation of the cervical canal <clears throat> and C for curatage. But now this procedure has many variations. For example, one is E and C. E and C is uh, evacuation and curatage in those cases where the cervix is already dilated and does not need to be dilated. So that is E and C. Then there is the procedure of MBA, which is manual vacuum aspiration. Manual vacuum aspiration. And then further uh, uh, modification is, which is Hysteroscopy. Hysteroscopy is also now, therefore, the indications for DNC have kind of shrunk. Right? And before that, actually, I, I think that there should be one session on your behavior in the operating theater, for example. Uh, how do you conduct yourself in operating theater as a doctor, as a gyne gynecological resident? And as a specialist, uh, because you have to carry along the rest of the team with you, or you have to be part of the team. What kind of relationship would you have with the anesthesia people, anesthesia residents, anesthesia consultants? What kind of relationship would you have with the nursing staff, with the OTA operating oh. assistant nursing staff, nursing sister, OTAs, and other staff who are working in the operating theater suites? So you need to uh, establish your uh, uh, method of or way of behaving with them, uh, getting along with them, getting work with them, and because it is important, it is important that you project, you present yourself, and you interact with the rest of the staff as a, an amenable, as a cordial, as a, a sympathetic member of the team. Every person within the operating theater is a member of a team. Even the uh, uh, person who is sweeping the floors or cleaning the theater or uh, those OTAs who are bringing in the uh, patient and taking them out or adjusting the lights or adjusting the table position, etc. All of them, they all of these people, they work in coordinated manner. And therefore, it is important that uh, uh, your behavior, your the way you carry yourself, the way you talk, the kind of language that you use, the kind of mannerism that you have, that should be, which is generally part of a team, right? So we'll talk about that in greater detail some other time, but one, one, one we, we come back to this. Now, in any procedure, this is the, some of the variations, as I said, D and C, this is uh, again, one of that, MV is one, and hysteroscopy is another. So these are those. Now, whenever you have a procedure, you need to develop your own checklist of that. You would do that. Uh, you make it up and then interact and finalize it. checklist. What do I mean by checklist? Uh, the checklist would, uh, uh, would be something which will let you know what needs to be done. What are the things that you would do? For example, now, if I ask you, how would you do a DNC? Sunila, what are the steps of DNC? First of all, uh, the proper uh, scrubbing. Uh, aapne ka scrubbing. Scrub, aapne hona as a surgeon, aap scrubbing ki baat karte. 
आप अपनी हो दूसरा अच्छा एक मिनट है फिर पोजीशन आपकी बात आ गई पोजीशन हाँ जी आप ना एग्जामिनेशन right history and examination and that will lead to what the decision on the procedure sir yes that will let you know what is the indication so you need to know what the indication of the procedure is whether it is indicated or not and if you are not the person who has taken the history initially or who uh, has not met with the patient and you deal with the patient only in the operating theater then you will go through the notes of the patient get a brief history and then make sure that that procedure whether dnc or a hysterectomy or whatever that is uh, that it actually is indicated so you would make sure about the indication of that you should know the objective of that and if you find that there is some reason for which that procedure may not be carried out you should tell the person who has brought in for example i send a patient to the operating theater for dnc and you go through that you can point it out that this patient has this 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 do we really go ahead with this right so this is something which you do so there history examination and indication then next investigation hmm investigation all all right investigations <laughs> investigations i'll put at 4 number 3 explanation to the patient informed and in, in, and getting informed Informed consent and... explaining to the patient what generally goes about uh, under the heading of counseling that is explanation to the patient that this is the problem for this this particular procedure whether it is dnc or it is mba or it is hysterectomy or it is hysteroscopy or whatever that this is the problem this is the diagnosis this is because you have after history and examination or investigation you have done uh, why we are having investigation at number 4 here is that the diagnosis has been made the uh, this is not going through the whole thing whole management we are concerned with the uh, uh, procedure but that is something which should have been done before him and the in investigations which are mentioned here they relate to the procedure there are investigations for example a woman comes with abnormal uterine bleeding and or excessive menstrual loss you do an ultrasound for that now ultrasound doesn't come under the, this set of investigations ultrasound is uh, uh, it is something that helps you diagnose arrive at a diagnosis so when we talk of investigation or we mention investigations here they relate to the investigations which are required for that procedure for for the uh, anesthesia and the rest of the uh, <laughs> procedures so those investigation so here it is explanation i would write explanation and explanation actually is counseling you tell that you have this problem and uh, for the diagnosis of this or for sometimes the treatment of that wo hai iske liye ye hona chahiye theek hai so history examination indication explanation investigations and then you tell the patient explain that you come to the operating theater etc etc the patient is brought it is the responsibility of the doctors the game it is our responsibility how the patient is brought into the operating theater how she is transferred from the stretcher to the operating table how the after the patient has been anesthetized how do we make the position that is also important you don't take it for granted that it is some job of someone else because you are the doctor you are responsible for all that 
making a position like lithotomy or bringing the patient down from lithotomy to straight, uh, that also entails, that's to be done in a proper fashion. If you don't do, the patient can end up in having some complications of the back, etc. So therefore, that positioning is also our responsibility. And we need to be aware. We need to be alive to whatever is happening in the operating theater. If you see someone doing something which shouldn't be done in the operating theater, or uh, the, the chain of sterility is likely to be broken by some action, then you point it out, right? So it is not only that you will just scrub up and uh, uh, put on the gown and gloves and just stand in isolation. You are an alive person, right? So being a live person there, you are, you are having uh, an overview of the operating theater. Now, this is not something which is related only to DNC, but for all, but that's part of the behavior in operating theater. So, positioning, scrub, kar liya aapne, ye main isko nikal dunga, kyunke wo aapne, wo aapki apni kya hai. Yahan pe position of the patient. Yahan pe usse pehle kya aayega? Paanch mein number pe, position se pehle. Anesthesia in preparation? Yes, yes, that's right. यहां पे हम कहेंगे कि एनेस्थीजिया नाउ एनेस्थीजिया इज अकॉर्डिंग टू द टाइप ऑफ प्रोसीजर दैट यू आर गोइंग टू कैरी आउट एंड द यू सिंस यू हैव मोस्टली सीन दैट वी गिव जनरल एनेस्थीजिया इज दैट इनफ टू से जनरल एनेस्थीजिया बट दिस इज अ प्रोसीजर व्हिच इन मेनी American books that you would read that it is an office procedure. Office procedure is something that can be done in the clinic. Why in the clinic? Because their clinics are slightly different. They have a lithotomy uh, table in the clinic, lithotomy examination table. And uh, for gynecological patients, we generally examine them in straight uh, supine position. And then get uh, if we have to done, do pelvic examination, then we uh, flex the legs and cover the patient, etc. We do it like that. But that actually doesn't give you complete access. For example, you can't do a proper uh, 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 speculum examination in dorsal position. For that, you have to have lithotomy position in which you, you can properly insert the speculum, whether it is bivalve or uh, uh, a sim speculum. So therefore, when we talk of anesthesia, we talk of only or uh, what kind of anesthesia you would give. So it can be local anesthesia, local infiltration of the cervix. It can be spinal or uh, epidural analgesia, and it can be general anesthesia. And what sort of general anesthesia? Yes, and because a short general anesthesia is better than, why better? Because it is of shorter duration than a spinal anesthesia, which would take six to eight hours for, to wear off and all that, right? And similarly, epidural, uh, which will be more cumbersome, and it, but in special circumstances, you may need to have spinal or epidural analgesia. And therefore, when you talk, uh, say, say anesthesia, usually you would say, usually short general anesthesia, right? So that is the type of anesthesia. Then next is the <coughs> position. What is the position? Yes. In the organ lithotomy. Next. Preparation of the area. Preparation of area means external genitalia, vulva, and the surrounding area up to what point? And then extent of that preparation. And method of that preparation, why, what kind of solution do you use? Cevlon, diluted cevlon, or pyrene, mm -hmm. right? So both of these can be used uh, depending upon what kind of procedure it's, it's carried out. 
but generally both are uh, acceptable for uh, DNC or for uh, uh, minor gynecological procedures. Not for the hysterectomy that you would seven seven one would not be enough, but generally that that is so preparation of area and area of operation is in this particular case especially vagina. You see, if you paint all around and the vulva etc. thoroughly, but you leave out vagina, that's not enough. As a matter of fact, first you do what you do is that you paint the vulva and the area around a little bit, and then you concentrate on the vaginal canal. So that should be thoroughly uh, prepared, thoroughly uh, 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 painted with the, the uh, antiseptic solution, whether pyridine or cellulose. And uh, while, while you are doing it, you make sure that you go gently, not forcefully, because all tissues are quite delicate. So you don't push in too hard. So you go in and all around the cervix, so all furnaces are seen. Even after that, you would many a time see that when you pass in the sin speculum, you will see that some area still is not colored or is still not uh, ha has had that stain of pyridine. So anyway, preparation of the area. Number eight, bladder, emptying bladder. Now this is something which may be optional in the sense that Immediately before the patient is shifted to the operating theater, you can ask the patient to go to the toilet and empty her bladder. So that will save her catheterization even with that metallic catheter, right? So that intervention can be avoided if you ask the patient to empty her bladder before she is shifted. But if there has been, uh, if she hasn't done that and there has been some time which has elapsed since she has come to the operating theater, etc., then you make sure that the bladder is empty, you catheterize that. Nine, Oh, no. Preparation of uh, area or yaha pe art pe hona chahiye tha kya? Draping, draping. Ye nine hai. Ye eight pe aega draping. Okay? You drape or emptying the bladder. Or 10 pe aega. EU. All patients who have to have a procedure, you, you do an EUA. And I would say that those patients in whom even abdominal procedures are going to be carried out, for example, abdominal hysterectomy or laparotomy for an ovarian cyst or endometriosis, uh, you should take the opportunity of catheterizing and then doing a pelvic examination. You do pelvic examination under anesthesia after you have catheterized the patient to see, to, uh, to sharpen your impression of the size of the uterus, the position of the uterus, its mobility, etc. etc. Because uh, later on, when the abdomen is opened and you can directly visualize the organs, you can then correlate that this is the kind of feeling that you had when you were examining the patient, and this is the size of the uterus which it turns out to be. So if you make a mental note that it was a bulky uterus or it was a normal uterus, nulliparous uterus, or it was a 12 weeks or 10 week size uterus, uh, then you uh, see it on opening of the abdomen and confirm with the surgeon. Uh, this is for the learning stages that is it 10 weeks, it is 12 weeks, what do you call this size of the uterus? Or if it is irregularly enlarged, make a note of that, that you think that this is the body of the uterus, this is a fibroid, or this is uh, uh, an adnexal cyst or adnexal mass which was separate or which was uh, adherent with the uterus. So that is the kind of mental note that you would have when you examine the patient. And in EUA also, uh, remember whatever we have said about uh, the physical examination, pelvic examination, that is what you do. So you determine the size of the uterus, the position of the uterus, the consistency of the uterus, its mobility, and also, you look at the, uh, you have an impression of the lateral forces, right? And uh, get an impression of the cervix also. So that will give you some impression which side of the, whether the uterus is antiverted, it is retroverted, antiflex, how, how much, sometimes it is acutely antiflex, so on and so forth, right? So a uterus which is uh, like this, that's an antiverted, antiflexed uterus, right? So, but sometimes the uterus is
that is rather acutely uh, antibody glucose. Okay. As a matter of fact, if you look at ultrasound, the channel is going like this. So that's an acutely antiverted. Now, what can happen at that time? That if you pass an instrument, and if you are not aware that it is an acutely antiverted, and what steps should be taken, then you can perforate the posterior uterine wall. So this is important that uh, that EUA should tell you about that, and you should have clear impression of that. And if because of some masses of fixity of the uterus because of pelvic inflammatory disease or endometriosis, the uterus is not mobile as much, then you would know uh, how to proceed, how to go about, and you would be more careful in introducing the instruments and your approach will be rather tentative, right? So EU number 10. DNC के step कितने बन गए? Eleven. Preparation cervix. हाँ? Preparation cervix पहले हो जाने चाहिए cervix क्योंकि आप डॉक्टर बता रहे हैं कि हाँ. You pass in the speculum and you retract the posterior vaginal wall to visualize the cervix. You do that. So then you pass in, after you've done that, then you pass in the same speculum. Here, what happens? Same speculum. It's me applicable visualization of the cervix. Number 12. Huh? Yes. Then you hold the cervix. Hold. A bit delayed. Jo cervix is go hold in the to So you use either cellular forceps. Or at an aculum. And it should be held like this, not like this. Okay? It is. Because this uh, curve is made for pubic synthesis. Otherwise, ye ja ke vestibule or urethral or it will be hit. And it will be very painful. Or baad mein patient ko pain hoti rahi. And you may do undue damage. Uh, and then you will have to pull the cervix uh, with force. So all you do is with fingertips. Remember, with fingertips. So this is how you hold the cervix. And this is not to pull the uterus down. This is just to stabilize it. So then hold the cervix with tenaculum. Number 13. Hmm? Yeah. Sound the uterus. Sound. 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 Now, in this case, if it is acutely antiverted, what you do is you will then apply some traction to the anterior lip. When you apply some traction to the anterior lip, it will kind of straighten out. Okay? And then you pass the sound here. So, what will happen with that? What will happen with the effect of the sound pass? What will happen? The right cavity will be sized. And? And he can see it. 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 Specific. Sir, you will know the position, right? Yes. You will know the position, right? Yes, right. 
राइट ए, ए, पता नहीं आ, मैं इसको पता करना नहीं कहूंगा मैं कहूंगा कि इससे कंफर्म हो सो so, आपने अगर इफ द साउंड गोज इन स्मूथली लाइक दिस तो वो इट विल कंफर्म द पोजीशन साइज एंड थर्डली इट आल्सो एक्ट्स एज द फर्स्ट डायलेटर ओके सो साउंड इज और साउंड को जब अगर उठाओ तो साउंड को ऐसे पकड़ना है और जब आप इस्तेमाल करो तो तब भी ऐसे ही पकड़ना है कि आप उसको फिंगर टिप्स में मैंने कहा तो साउंड को आप फिंगर टिप्स में पकड़ के इस तरह से एंड देन इट इट इज नॉट टू बी पुश्ड स्ट्रेट लाइक दैट इट हैज टू गो अलोंग दी यूट्राइन वॉल इन दी डायरेक्शन ऑफ दी दैट कर्व ऑफ द यूट्रिस सो साउंड इज द फर्स्ट डायलेट उसके बाद फिर आप डायलेट करते हो You start with the small dilator, and these 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 are Hagar dilators. There are different kinds of dilators, and this is double-ended Hagar dilator. And these one millimeter, two millimeter, two millimeter, three millimeter, so that the number is given. So you then you then dilate the cervix up to the level where uh, the kind of procedure that you are doing is required. Okay. Now in cases of ENC evacuation and curettage, or in a pregnant uterus. what you don't do you don't pass in the sound because if you pass the sound in <coughs> you can very easily perforate the softened uterine wall uterine wall normally is about 1 cm thick and it's a reasonably firm wall and again as i said that you pass it and you use only your fingertips to pass in the sound but even then it is easy to uh, perforate the pregnant uterine wall and therefore you don't pass in the sound and <coughs> now after having passed the sound in the diagnostic dnc now you know what is the length of the cavity it is 9 cm it is 10 cm then you start to dilate the cervix and the method of doing that is you hold the dilator either in your fingertips like this or like this with your finger at the place where you If, if the cervix is uh, if the uterine cavity is say 9 cm then you can say about 6 cm the uh, uterine canal and 3 cm or 2 cm is the cervical and then you just want to dilate the internal os you need not go beyond you need not go with the dilator up to the fundus so you place your finger up to which you are going to insert the dilator in that case you can hold the dilator like this and you pass in so that it uh, uh, this finger acts as a kind of block it's a stopper so when you pass the uh, uh, dilator into the cervix holding it with the uh, with the bolsella to stabilize it not to pull it to stabilize it you pass in the dilator and you pass it either this way or you hold it like this when you hold it like this again your ulnar border of the hand that will come against the left hip of the patient and it will not allow excessive use of the board because you are not pushing it like that so to number one you will be uh, uh, careful in uh, uh, the length of the dilator that you are introducing into the cervical canal but extra guarding for that is to hold it like this or to hold it like this so that it is not ex excessive with this kind of motion excessive force cannot be applied one and it cannot be pushed a little too high so sir ye camera ke kareeb karke dikha de sorry for interruption ye ek 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 to aap aise pakdenge isko sir is tarah se ye yahan tak gaya ya aap ye aise pakdenge ye so these are two methods of holding a dilator ye main mota wala le leta hu either this so you want only to introduce up to this length of the dilator into the cervix not beyond that or you hold it like this and then you push it like this <laughs> uh, and imagine that this is being done in a woman who is in a lithotomy position so this hand would come against the thigh so th these are the two methods of holding that so after you have dilated it सर सॉरी ये अब लेफ्ट हैंड से कर रहे थे सर ये डायरेक्टर आपने लेफ्ट हैंड से मैं मैं राइट हैंड से कर रहा हूं राइट हैंड में ये मैं इस तरह से खड़ा हो जाता हूं राइट ये देख जी सर थैंक यू सर जी सर थैंक यू और ऐसे ठीक है जी सर
अच्छा जी ये डायलेटर हो गया डायलेटेशन होगी एडिक्वेट वट इज द नेक्स्ट स्टेप सो यहाँ पे होल्ड दी सर्विक्स एंड देन इज ब्रिटिश डायलेटेशन लिखते हैं अमेरिकन डायलेशन लिखते हैं डायलेटेशन ऑफ सर्वाइकल कैनाल ओके एसेंशियली द इंटरनल वॉस चौदह नंबर स्टेप सर अब एक्चुअल प्रोसीजर अगर एमबीए कर रहे हैं तो वो कैनुलर डालेंगे अगर नहीं नहीं कर रहे एमबीए नहीं कर रहे हम डायग्नोस्टिक डीएनसी कर रहे हैं अच्छा डायग्नोस्टिक तो फिर सर पाइप पिल और जो भी है डायग्नोस्टिक डीएनसी के लिए क्यूरेटेज नहीं क्यूरेटेज से पहले एक होगा अब वो वो जो होता था वो है एक्सप्लोरेशन ऑफ द यूट्राइन कैविटी विद अ स्पंज फोर्सेप्स ये स्पंज फोर्सेप्स है स्पंज फोर्सेप्स में ये रेशेट होता है ये इसका लॉक होता है इसको रेशेट बोलते हैं आर ए सी एच ई टी रेशेट रेशेट लॉक है तो ये आप इस्तेमाल करते हो एंड यू चूज द स्पंज फोर्सेप्स ऑफ द साइज अप टू व्हिच यू हैव ऑलरेडी डायरेक्टेड द सर्विस सो दैट it doesn't uh, 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 uh you don't have yeah it doesn't traumatize and you don't have to force it in the other which uh, instrument which is not available here that is like it's again shaped like this but it doesn't have <coughs> it doesn't has this lock that is known as ovum forceps mm -hmm. and that was used for ye mba jo hai ye 25 20 25 saal se hai lekin ab zyada pichle 10 saalon mein iska istemal zyada hua उससे पहले मैं तो अभी भी मुझे पुरानी आदत है मैं एमबीए के बगैर अगर ज्यादा उसमें है एक्सपेक्टेड के प्रोडक्ट्स ऑफ कंसेप्शन होगी तो मैं ये वाला इस्तेमाल करता हूँ तो ओवर फोर्सेप्स का लॉक नहीं होता नंबर वन नंबर टू इट वाज अ लिटिल कर्व्ड टू अकोमोडेट इस तरह से साइड पे कर्व होती इस तरह से इस, इस तरह की कर्व होती थी so और वहां से वो Now, if you are using uh, this forceps, spine forceps, what you do is you pass it in a horizontal manner with the blades horizontal, like this. You pass it in, go as far as you want to go, uh, so that you touch the fundus, just touch the fundus, then open it up, open, open, and then rotate to ninety degrees, then close it. then rotate back to the original position and then withdraw so in that in this way if you would come across a polyp then that polyp will be brought into relief अब ये कल हमने इंस्ट्रेक्टमी की है उसमें ये पॉलिप था इस तरह पर नाउ यू कैन इमेजिन दैट इफ स्पाइन फोर्सेप्स हैड बीन इंट्रोड्यूस्ड इनटू दिस ये हिस्टोरेक्टमी स्पेसिमन है देख देख रहे हैं आप कैमरा में और इसमें ये पॉलिप जो था ये इसको हमने ऊपर किया हुआ है तस्वीर लेने के लिए अदरवाइज व्हेन यू पास इन द स्पाइन फोर्सेप्स इट कुड बी हेल्ड विद इन द Sponge forceps and brought up like that. So this is the nowadays if it the the a polypectomy has to be carried out, then what is the procedure of choice? Hysteroscopy, hysteroscopic polypectomy. But if a stereoscope is not available and you have you have a report that there is a polyp, then this is how you would go about. So it is uh, uh, the standard procedure. That you and you have to evacuate the uterus. You don't have an MBA equipment, so you have to evacuate the uterus of incomplete abortion. And then what you do is that after having dilated, or uh, if the service is already dilated, without that, you pass in the uh, spine forceps. Or the spine forceps, वो उसका वो ही होना चाहिए जितना आपने सर्वाइक सर्विक्स को dilate किया हुआ. That's why you find that there are various sizes of these spine forceps which are available in the DNC set. ठीक है तो लो जी आपने डायलेटेशन ऑफ सर्विस कर दिया और नेक्स्ट है ये एक्सप्लोरेशन एक्सप्लोरेशन ऑफ दूट्राइन कैविटी देन द नेक्स्ट स्टेप इज क्यूरेटाज टी यू आर ई डबल टी ए और ये है 
क्यों डेट मैं बड़ा वाला उठा के दिखा रहा हूँ ये बड़ा वाला है और इसमें आमतौर पे एक शार्प एंड होता है और एक ब्लंट एंड होता है और इसी तरह से ये छोटे से छोटा भी है और ये बड़ा भी है डिपेंडिंग अपॉन वट यू आर डूइंग और उसपे अगर Okay, so uh, some people would combine diagnostic laparoscopy to see the assess or have the assessment of the tubal patency and DNC, and that's why they would do it in the second half. These days, I wouldn't do it in the second half because of even one percent chance of pregnancy in cases of infertility. Mm -hmm. So if I want to know whether she's ovulating or not, then came in the progesterone, twenty-one day progesterone. If it is rising or it is a high, that would mean that uh, 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 ovulation has taken place. And then came in the vaginal ultrasound. Vaginal ultrasound shows you if you have, uh, if you do uh, an ultrasound in a 28-day cycle woman on day 12, 13, 14, you would see follicular development. And if you repeat it after two or three days, then you would see that it has collapsed or there would be some streak of fluid around that. So there are two features which are suggestive of the ovum having been released. <clears throat> so now those उंड Uh, uh, status of the endometrium, and not only thickness of the endometrium, but also the endometrial relationship with the myometrium. Whether there is clear demarcation between where the endometrium ends and myometrium begins, or if there is a hazy kind of thing, it is kind of invading and all that. So that that will be quite different. So the ultrasound now, as particularly TVS, has uh, uh, replaced quite a few of the procedures like that, but. In cases of abnormal bleeding, or even in cases of PCO, when there there used to be what is known as cystic endometrial hyperplasia. Now, in cases of postmenopausal bleeding or bleeding in uh, women who are uh, up forty or above or abnormal uterine bleeding, if you do a uh, diagnostic DNC, you want to have that endometrium for uh, assessment. What kind of uh, excessive growth of that is? Now, if you come across a woman who has sixteen millimeter or uh, Someone uh, on on the uh, uh, from the audience also suggested that pipel, depending upon that. <clears throat> but pipel is something that we do without anesthesia, and that's still is an obvious procedure. But what she meant was that uh, when you want to see the status of the endometrium, right? <clears throat> so uh, coming back to keratoid, <clears throat> uh, one of the complications of keratoid, if one is too over. If you are not doing it adequately, then you might leave behind some products of conception, say in cases of incomplete abortion. On the other hand, if you want to be sure that nothing is left behind and you are over enthusiastic, you might scrape off excessive amount of endometrium, even taking away the basal layer from which the endometrium grows then again in the next menstrual cycle and all, so on and so forth, right? Mm -hmm. So if you do that, then that becomes And particularly if there is some bit of uh, inflammation or infection, then uh, the synecy are formed and uh, formed, and, and uh, that, that results in Asherman syndrome. So therefore, many uh, would advocate that you don't use the sharp end and you use the yeah. blunt end. But since the beginning of my career in uh, of obstetrics, I have always used the sharp end, sharp. 
because the book that I followed that advocated that. And the reason was that if you're careful and you do it gently, then you are more likely to take away the tissue with sharper things, not leave behind. And you, you don't have to hold the instrument like this. Don't hold it like this. This is not the way of holding a curet. The curet has to be held again with the fingertips. With the finger. This way or that way. Right? I usually hold the curet in this fashion uh, between my fingertips and the thumb. And I would curate it systematically. Start and just gently, just touch the interior wall and bring it down. Don't push. Yeah, you can push it, push it against the wall. Don't do that. Just when you touch the interior wall and then you bring it down. And it should be done in a systematic fashion so that interior, then rotate it, rotate it a little bit, then side wall, posterior wall, the other wall, and that's it, right? So this is how you do it. But I am not saying that you do uh, with sharp or with blunt. Uh, you would do it according to your uh, methodology. But to my residents, I would say that you can use the sharp, but holding it again with the, the fingertips, you do it in a systematic fashion, go all the way. So this is curator. 16. Next step here. Whatever is obtained, usko collect the tissue. Obtained tissue. Obtained tissue. And then spread it over a uh, gauze piece and see what it looks like. It's gross appearance. Whether they are, uh, there is a polyp, there are endometrial curatings, there are uh, products of conception. So you make a note of that. And uh, then uh, you take all of that and put that into 10% formulae for histopathology. So collection of the uh, obtained tissue and its examination and the rest will be it. Step number 17. Here, what do you do? This is 16, this is 17. 16 pe aajega, removal of the instruments. Ye. Removal of instruments. Or then you have to collect the tissue. And you have to see it 18 step. Yes, good. Observe, look for the amount of bleeding that the patient is ha having. Abnormal go jaga se ho sakti, uterine cavity se bhi ho sakti, and sometimes from where you held the service with the wall cell. So bleeding ke liye observe karoge. Aur usko notes mein mention bhi karoge ke kitne bleeding. Nineteen. Twenty. Twenty. Patient ko clean, rape, usko swab clean karoge. Clean or 20 bit. Patient will split. Send it prepared and straighten the patient. Our responsibility is up to what point? Till the patient is discharged. <laughs> As a matter of fact, even afterwards, post operative complications, later delayed, etc. But in the operating theater, the doctor's responsibility in my, my viewpoint is assist providing the sterile pad. But the sweeper's pad daily. Why shouldn't the sweepers be given pad? Because despite having used gloves, etc. So that has to be done in a proper manner. So giving a sterile pad and then putting the patient, making sure that the patient is put back to dorsal position in proper manner with both legs being either when we're putting a turn lithotomy, uh, bringing the leg, uh, legs up together and bring the legs down together uh, in that position without any jerky movements. And then also making sure that the 
her feet are placed on the mattress, not without mattress. Uh, uh, imagine delivery room don't let the patient be brought back to dorsal position until and unless the table has been straightened and there is a proper mattress and the whole table has the same uh, uh, level. So if you do it, that if, if the, up to the buttocks, she is on a uh, thick mattress and her feet would be going on a uh, part of the table which is without mattress and the mattress is thin, then hyperextension And that might give rise to post-operative problems and pain of the back. So you have to uh, be careful about that. So and then you make sure the anesthesia people are there to make sure that the patient is out of anesthesia and then hospital. Now, these are the steps of a simple procedures like B and C. We don't. But these are the 20 steps, and you must apply yourself to these steps. dilatation of the service and the reverse things, they those points are the same up to dilatation and from removal of this wo sare usme se wo chala jayega exploration wo kya hota hai unki jagah kuch aur cheeze aa jayengi wo step 14 or 15 jo hai aur wo usme badlenge baki to wohi steps chalenge so therefore ye aap in steps ko aap achhi tarah se zehen mein rakhe aur ye hai sara stuff hai jo ke udhar zarurat hoti hai dnc ke usme ab ko acha ab isme indication jo aapne aapka homework hai indication for dnc do cheezon mein aati hai wo ek diagnostic hoti hai ek therapeutic hoti hai number 2 comparison of mva and evacuation and keratage or dnc <coughs> In those cases of mid proportion when the cervix is not dilated, you do a DNC. So uh, comparison, you table below side by side advantages, disadvantages. MBA or oh, upper advantages, don't know if a line draws are different disadvantages, don't know if comparative. Indications for hysteroscopy, diagnostic hysteroscopy. It's advantages over DNC. Complications of DNC. Yeah, next up, the uh, uh, heading you have. This may have been complications generally. PCB procedure key would be a complication related to anesthesia, complications related to procedure or procedure. Really, complications would be immediate and delayed. Immediate may either the OED procedure or those cheeses wrong, bleeding, excessive bleeding or unintended injury. To other surrounding structures. If you injury, you are doing dilatation, you are cutting, you are clamping, you are tying, that is intentional. But unintentional injury to the uh, organs alongside. Uh, uh, perforation of the uterus, is injury to bladder, injury to rectum, etc. No, 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 Or perforation. Perforation, sir. Ah, per oh, oh, injury may again, perforation may again, injury may again, bleeding or injury, you perforation be again. Or a grab then may have to go with Adi. Adhesion. Oh, yes, good. Agar if it's a, a bit, the, the curatage has been over enthusiastic, then uh, formation of adhesions. That's why one has to be careful about the, the way you use that curatage or usko kis tarikhe se aap gatte. Ab, uh, once again, main aapko bata dun, ye thin speculum, isko kaise hold karna hai? This is, this is how the right or left hand, aap is, is tarah se istemal karte ho, khud se pakarte ho. This is to retract the vaginal walls to visualize the cervix. The... Uh, Volcellum has to be held like this. Again, we ring finger and thumb or those kiss out. And uh, you need to uh, use it like this. And then sounds. 
sound again in fingertips and uh, dilator either like this or preferably like this with the fingertips and uh, then sponge forceps you take it in like that open it rotate it to 90 degrees close it back then bring it out and uh, cure it here it has to be held with the, the fingertips again so that you don't you and you have to use it gently even the blunt end has to be used gently but one may be forced to use extra force with blunt and make sure that that's why the advantage of simple one you do it gently and you don't use force at all that's it any questions please take it no yes you know it's not going to be a good idea thank you क्योंकि ये जिस तरह आपने बताया कहने को तो ये बात जब पहले दिन हाउस जॉब में आई थी उस दिन बताने वाली थी और इनको बताई जा रही है जब इनकी एफ सी पी एस पार्ट टू की ट्रेनिंग कम्प्लीट हो गई एंड आई फील वेरी स्ट्रॉन्गली दिस इज द नीड दिस द नीड हाउ टू होल्ड इंस्ट्रूमेंट हाउ टू मूव इट और यूज इट ये सारी बातें जो है ये इम्पोर्टेंट है चाहे किसी उम्र में भी सीख शेख सादी ने चालीस साल की उम्र में पढ़ना लिखना सीखा था कोई बात नहीं है लेट है आप लोगों के लिए ये फर्क साहब जो बता रहे हैं प्रिसाइजली इनको नोट कीजिए और सीखिए और जो मेजर प्रोसीजर्स आप परफॉर्म करते हैं स्पेशलिस्ट गायनाकोलॉजिस्ट वो सब के सब इनसे सीख लीजिए बिकॉज हिज टेक्निक्स आर परफेक्ट एज क्लोज टू द टेक्सट बुक एज पॉसिबल तो आप जरूर इनसे ये सीखें और फर्क आपसे रिक्वेस्ट है ये सब के सब बताएं ठीक है we will continue with this <coughs> right sir okay thank you okay. thank you assalam